David Katz, everybody. Thank Come you, on. You, Mark oh, I hear your voice and see your face all around the world, literally. Canadian broadcasting, overseas on BBC. You're so good to on Fox News. You're so good to be with us here on Thursdays. We really uh, cherish our time with you. There's so much going on. Can you, can I start with something that we haven't spoken of a lot on this show? I was kind of saving it for uh, your appearance, and that's Hunter Biden. Uh, you know, we're always, you don't talk enough about Hunter Biden. What about the Hunter Biden charges? What about the deal that Hunter Biden got? Was it a sweetheart deal? Wasn't a sweetheart deal? Give me a moment on that, please, David. Well, sure. Um, you know, this is, of course, the uh, president's son. Um, this is uh, the investigation by Congress is about more or less events when he was the vice president. Um, they've made a big political issue about this. A special prosecutor uh, was not appointed. But what happened was that under Trump, Trump's appointed assistant, uh, excuse me, Trump's appointed U.S. attorney for the District of Delaware was investigating Hunter Biden. He famously left a laptop with some repair guy who then turned it over to some right wing organization. Somehow it ended up in Giuliani's hands. Giuliani ran around, tried to make this a big issue in the uh, 2020 election, I guess it was. Um, it kind of got downplayed by the main media. The right wing press is screaming that uh, that's because they were selective. All of that is really not reflected in these latest charges. That was being investigated, and what happened was that Biden just kept in place the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Delaware. In other words, he's got a right to appoint all 90-plus U.S. attorneys around the country, Mark. But instead of appointing a new one in uh, Delaware, he left the same Trump-appointed one there to handle this investigation. So as not to make it look like uh, it was going to be politically influenced in some ways. That, that was the idea, right? Exactly. Um, and so that was kind of like having a special counsel in the Trump investigation, but it wasn't exactly the same thing. That's, of course, one of the political criticisms now by the right, that there should have been a special prosecutor. But the point was there was a normal prosecutor picked by Trump who was kept in place. At the end of this investigation, uh, all he ended up bringing were two misdemeanor tax charges. And I do a lot of that kind of work, and I have a lot of interesting feelings about it. You know, just look at the tax part of the case, which I know people find sort of the least interesting. You know, uh, does this really lead to President Biden? Well, obviously, the taxes don't lead to President Biden in any way, shape or form. The other charge, which is sort of interesting to people, it's confusing. So he applies for a gun and it's part of filling out an application to buy a gun. You have to list. Are you currently under the you know, under the influence of drug? Not currently, but. Do you use drugs a lot? There's some question like that, which basically, if you're really a drug addict or a person who uses a lot of drugs at the time, maybe not a casual smoker of weed or something like that, you're supposed to list yes. He says no. Now, what's interesting is that the political investigation and this laptop show that he was on the crack pipe, show that he was high all the time, that he was leading this kind of uh, degenerate life at that time. So the Republican Congress members having sort of boxed themselves in a corner, their position is that he was on the crack pipe and he was totally out of it. If he was totally out of it, then when he signed the form that said he wasn't totally out of it on drugs, he was out of it. And that would be a defense <laughs> to make wow. a false statement that he really didn't even know what he was signing because he was so high at the time. And that sort that's of was his defense. And they walked themselves right into that. So what's happening with that charge, that's going to be a separate um, proceeding but that one's going to be subject to pretrial diversion, which a lot of people believe there should be more pretrial diversion. And the people who say, well, what a bunch of hypocrites the Democrats are because they say they want these really intrusive, um, you know, uh, revealing uh, applications to buy guns. And here they have a guy who got an application to buy a gun and lied on it. I thought the Democrats cared about that so much. Well, no, what they want to know on these applications, it's true that if you're on drugs all the time, you probably shouldn't be having a gun. But the ones that the Democrats talk about more, that the gun control advocates talk about more, is the people who haven't had a waiting period, the people who are underage, uh, the people who are felons and they're buying the guns at gun shows. That's the people they want to try to restrict more. But returning to the, so that's going to be diverted as long as he doesn't get on drugs. And apparently he's clean these days, Hunter Biden is. 
uh, he should succeed on pretrial diversion, and then the case will be diverted. He'll have. By no the way, David, I don't mean to interrupt, but just on that point about the assigning the form and stating various things like I don't do drugs or I'm not on drugs, or whatever. Uh, I my understanding was that that's a little like um, uh, you know, busting somebody on that is a little like uh, the seatbelt. Uh, law, once they pulled you over for something else, then they look in and they see that you don't have a seatbelt on. Okay, we got you for that also. It's kind of like a sort of an insignificant add-on. Can you, uh, I don't know if there's a, you know, on a scale of one to 10, I mean, how significant is it? It seemed, it, it was described in many of the things I read as not necessarily that significant. It's a firearms charge sounds very sort of incendiary, but not necessarily the case. To say that you're a um, not a felon when you are a felon, or to say that you're above the age where you can get a gun where you're not, or to say that you don't have a mental history of psychotic, of psychosis, let's say. Obviously, those are very important things, and we should have a good gun control law that really uh, enforces that. What they're talking about now, I, you know, a person uses drugs a lot, and they don't put down check, I use drugs a lot. They say that's only been brought once or twice like ever, Mark. That is a very rare charge. And on the major question of people who ask, if your name weren't Trump, would you be charged in any of the Trump cases? If your name weren't Hunter Biden, would you be charged in any of these cases? If his name were not Hunter Bar Biden, he would not be charged with that gun offense. The taxes are more interesting. He made over a million dollars in two years, uh, Hunter Biden did, and he didn't file a tax return at all. He didn't pay any money at all. Now, in my experience, and I've done a lot of these cases, uh, people, if the IRS knows about that and has good proof of it, those people are charged and they're charged with felonies. Now, what you can do in a tax case, there's all these taxpayer bill of rights. So people always say that's what's ironic about your practice, Mr. Katz, is that your clients have more rights. And I try to press for them to have more rights than the average federal criminal defendant. Part of that is that I have talent and experience at that. But part of it is that I'm dealing with the IRS. And no matter what you hear, the IRS has more procedural safeguards than, let's say, you're dealing with the DHS or one of these other you know, federal agencies like that. And because of these taxpayer bill of rights, Mark, you're allowed to have a lot of review through the Department of Justice. So I don't want to get too inside baseball, but it's interesting. There's an attorney general, there's a deputy, and there's an associate. Those three people manage the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney's Office. They oversee the FBI. Beyond them, there are these different divisions. There's criminal, there's civil. If you remember this guy, Jeffrey Clark, who they were going to vault into being the number one guy. At oh, Justice, sure. So he could say there was fraud during the election. That guy was down the ladder, just in charge of the civil division. Now, after that criminal civil, there's a tax division. And under these taxpayer bill of rights, you're allowed to go to the head of the tax division and you're allowed to have a meeting with that person or with that person's designee. Now, I've done that three times in recent years. Two out of the three times I've actually gotten to stop the federal criminal charges completely. And what was so interesting in the two cases where I was able to stop my client being charged with anything federally criminally is that in both cases, I offered a misdemeanor and the IRS disdained a misdemeanor uh, to the point that they didn't take it. I mean, we were going to say he'll plead guilty to something. He'll plead guilty to a misdemeanor. And this has led a lot of people to wonder why, since the, and this is going to be a ding word, the IRS eschews um, misdemeanor. Oh, my God, very strong. Yes. Why they approved it in this case. And I think one thing is that they had this prosecutor. He didn't really make the political, quote, political cases, the corruption cases, the cases that were supposed to. I mean, yes, he was a lobbyist. Of course, people gave him money because his last name was Biden. They didn't get the Saudis and the, the Ukrainians didn't come to you, Mark Thompson or me, David Katz. They might have if we were Mark Thompson, Biden or David Katz, Biden. We all know that. We know that that happens. But it happens with so many people. Look at Trump's kids. How did Kushner get a two billion dollar contract with the Saudis? Why? They just picked his name out of the phone book. They just decided he was the best investment advisor. The Saudi, uh, the top guys advising the Saudi said, why are you investing with this guy? Kushner has no experience. He has no track record. He's charging higher commissions. Why would you pick this guy? Well, Mark, you know why they picked this guy? Because his name was Kushner. And of course, some of these people chose Biden because his last name was Biden. Not that much that his dad can do about it. What's he supposed to do, Mark? Issue a press release that says, don't anybody talk to my son? They say, what, I never talked to my son about anything. I mean, that would be peculiar on its own. So my thought about this is that what happened was 
the, the, the defense attorney, as I would have done, said, go with the misdemeanor. I can live with the misdemeanor. You obviously have a misdemeanor charge on him because he didn't file a timely tax return. He apparently didn't file. He didn't he didn't submit any of the money that he owed. If you're making over a million dollars two years in a row, that's a righteous case, as I say, as a felony. However, there's so much luck involved with the IRS. And, you know, this is what people always make them crazy about the IRS. They said, my neighbor did such and such and such and such. Our guy I know in business, he did such and such and such. He didn't pay. They walked away. They did an audit. Nothing happened. The other guy got charged criminally. There is a lot of, of luck, and a lot of it depends how strong the IRS really has evidence. And that is often who ratted on who. You cannot believe how many IRS criminal cases come from information from the ex-spouse, right? Famously, oh, of course, wife. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex-business partner, right? Uh, the guy who dumps the girlfriend, and she's really pissed off, and so she calls the IRS and she says, "Let me tell you about my boyfriend." Okay, um, he did this <laughs> and didn't report it. He took this in cash. He's got five cars that are, you know, in somebody else's name, but they're really his cars, and he doesn't file a tax return. And if you get that kind of evidence, you know, then the IRS has a strong case. So whether they ever would have gotten to Hunter Biden if his name weren't Biden on this thing, the tax thing, is very questionable, Mark, whether they ever would have gotten to him. But if they did get to him, if somebody had ratted him out, right, uh, wanted to be an IRS whistleblower, they also have these whistleblower laws, Mark, where they pay somebody a part of the recovery if they rat out somebody else for uh, tax crimes. Um, so if they had gotten to him over a million dollars, two years in a row, nothing paid, uh, you know, timely, uh, and uh, no tax return filed at all, that certainly would support a misdemeanor. It would indeed support a felony. So, you know, all in all, I think his criminal defense attorney did a very good job. And you have to look at something else. I think the realistic thing is that we've never had a president's very close relative, uh, sitting president's very close relative, I believe, ever prosecuted successfully in federal court. And I think everyone assumes that if that ever happened, they would get a pardon. And the reality uh, is see. you may not like the pardon power that Trump has used, okay? But what, Biden Biden would let his son sit in federal prison, really? With the power to pardon him, really? And so you got to weigh all of that. He could live with the two misdemeanors. They were clearly righteous uh, because he hadn't even filed a return timely at all. Those are certainly misdemeanor charges. So all in all, I think that his lawyer made a very good deal for him. I think the reality was it's something that Hunter Biden could live with. It's something that whether he'll say it or not, his dad could live with. And uh, life goes on and the Republicans can scream, but I don't think they really have any evidence. They have somebody who was missing and now he's dead. I mean, of course, they're going to look around and say, oh, foul play. Is it another Vince Foster? No, Vince Foster was BS. And no, nobody, in my opinion, they're not going to prove that somebody killed this guy because he had the goods on Hunter Biden. They just don't have a witness. They don't have anything. They're just screaming in the House. The Republicans are like they were just screaming about Adam Schiff. And in my opinion, they've got about as much on this Hunter Biden case or this witness as they did on Adam Schiff, which is Bupkis, which is nada. Well, the, the, as the shifting, of course, is a, a, a GOP politics, and there's a part of the politics here, the screaming that you're talking about, the GOP screaming about Biden, that's politics too. What I'm interested in, we all love your take on it because of your ability to analyze the legal side. And what I thought uh, among the things that you just said, I just want to underscore it, was that this Trump-appointed prosecutor, okay, made this deal. And the other thing is, and it's just genius, is he also has to worry about making charges stick, right? And whether it's worth it, because at the end of it all, as you say, even if you make charges stick, there's a pardon waiting. It's like just not worth it. So on some level, if you can make a deal from the Trump-appointed prosecutor's point of view, it's still a good deal. And so it's kind of a win-win is what I'm getting from you. That's what I think, uh, you know, about that uh, particular case. I, I really do. And I don't think that it's so strange. And, uh, you know, I think that all of these should be teaching moments. You know, one thing that we notice is that um, things happen in these cases that make people focus on them because of the personalities involved, the president's son, Donald Trump. But we should learn from them. Like one thing that I think people should learn from the Donald Trump case down in the Southern District of Florida now is how quickly they turned over the discovery mark. That's not normal but it should be normal. 
there was somebody who threatened a witness in a federal case a long time ago as a mob case or whatever. They either attacked the witness or threatened the witness. So some congressman named Jenks got on his high horse decades ago and said, this is terrible. We cannot give witness statements to the defense until right before the trial. We're still living with something called the Jenks Act around the country, case after case. People think, well, you certainly get the witness statements. You know who testified in the grand jury against you. You know what the witnesses had to say that's supposedly and so incriminating. No, the answer is no, you don't. Uh, you get something called Brady material, what's supposed to really help you uh, exonerate you, exculpatory evidence. But the prosecutors around the country over and over again take the position that no, it's just a witness statement and you don't get it till like a week or two before the trial. Trump got it a week or two after the arraignment. This is absolutely extraordinary advantage, uh, benefit that Trump has gotten. But I think what people should step back and not just say, wow, what an advantage he got. He's being treated better than anybody else in federal criminal court is why don't we treat everybody like that? The number of people who really represent any kind of a threat to a witness are minuscule. And yet all of these people, white collar cases that I defend, they, they play games with discovery. They delay the discovery. And yes, you can go in front of the judge. But, you know, the judges figure, well, the prosecutor's been doing this for a long time. Regularity. They'll, they'll, they don't want to have the case reversed. But I can tell you, invite any other criminal defense attorney on your show who does a lot of uh, federal criminal work. And they'll tell you the same thing. It is a huge hassle. You don't get what they call open file discovery, whereas in some state case, you normally do get open file discovery, at least here in California. And in federal, you don't get those witness statements, which are so crucial to you. And a lot of other evidence just kind of, you know, it kind of trickles out and it should just come out all at once so you could evaluate the case. When I was a prosecutor, I wanted all the evidence to come out. If I didn't have a strong case, I didn't want to be there. I tell the defense attorney, listen, I don't want your client to say a word, a word. Sit there, quiet. Let me give you a two minute opening statement on the case. We got this. We got that. We got his buddy who says that he was there. We got this other person who says his alibi is nonsense, whatever it is. Right. Uh, but uh, a lot of prosecutors, federal prosecutors really don't have that that attitude. So. When you get back down to uh, the Florida case, and there are even hints that there could be another shoe to drop, right? I mean, that there could be maybe something in New Jersey as well with the documents there. And obviously, there are other cases brewing. We talk about J6, Georgia, et cetera. But let's just go with the Florida thing because you talk about the way, in a way, it's sort of being fast-tracked. I mean, uh, it's on the schedule early. The evidentiary part of it has been, as you've just suggested, uh, produced uh, ahead of what it might be otherwise. Uh, does that change your prediction at all about the fact that this this case won't be resolved before the general election in 2024? No, it doesn't change my opinion at all. I think that the special counsel is trying to um, put forth the best foot that he possibly can for the government and for the prosecution. He's trying to uh, rebut in the minds of people who have an open mind. Uh, and I think a lot of people do. They aren't in the Trump base that he's really bent over backwards to do everything. Uh, he's going to you know, he's going to be in Fort Pierce, Florida, in Trump country, in front of the judge that was handpicked uh, by Trump to hear the search case. And he had about a three, a one in three chance of doing that. And he did it anyway, whereas he could be in Washington, D.C. Um, and it would be just a, a much better venue for him and a proper venue for him. Um, but in terms of the case getting to trial, uh, Trump has no interest in getting into trial. And, you know, quite legitimately, I've gotten a lot of cases um, continued. Uh, because it takes a lot of time to go through the evidence. We don't know how much stuff they actually have in this case, but to go through, you know, hundreds of thousands of pages of discovery and to try to understand for each, each piece of evidence how it might be exculpatory, how it might help Trump, that's a legitimate argument why he needs more time. Now, he may have, I believe, a, a, an actual desire for delay. I think there'll be a drumbeat of delay here because I think it's not at all in his political interest to have his case tried before the nominating process. He's gonna lose this case. This case is overwhelmingly against him. Out of his own mouth, he says that I can't declassify this stuff right now. He shows it around and says, don't get too close to it because it's secret. Uh, these are out of his own mouth tapes that he knew were being made for this uh, autobiography of Mark Meadows that was being written. Uh, there's the whole fact that he had declarations signed by two different 
uh, lawyers certifying that everything had been turned over. And then when they went in on a search warrant, they found over 100 uh, highly classified documents still with their classified markings, the gold and the red on them. I mean, think of how devastating that is. And uh, then they have his own attorney uh, who testified against him, how, you know, they played hide and seek and he was told to certify uh, that there were no uh, secure, high security documents in like this 35 boxes and the 35 boxes weren't all the boxes. Meanwhile, the valet is alleged to have hidden in a conspiracy with Trump another 20 boxes so that he would certify all of them had no national security stuff in them and he hadn't seen all of them. 20 of them were hidden from that lawyer and the lawyer will walk through to the grand jury and he'll do it in front of the uh, uh, ju trial jury, the same thing. There is going to be a request to reopen that mark and uh, say, look, the judge decided Washington, D.C., but it wasn't a, a fair process. Um, we didn't have a chance to really have input on the defense side. The government showed that it was the crime fraud exception. We didn't have a chance to debate that. We want to debate that in front of you, Judge Cannon, down here in Fort Pierce, Florida, and she's got a right to reverse it. That would be a big decision. If she does exclude that evidence, then they're entitled to appeal that immediately. The government can. But so again, that not time. just to interrupt you, the crime fraud exception to what you've referred is the sense that the lawyer client confidentiality can be breached if there is a crime in the in the process of a crime being permitted uh, committed. Is that it? Yes. Well, think about this, Mark. Um, you, you, you come to me and you say, you know, I'm being investigated for this uh, tax crime that I committed, uh, you know, uh, a year ago, this and that. I have this defense. I have that defense. Here's what was on my mind. I have some witnesses I think can help me in the case. All of that totally confidential. My notes about it, totally confidential. It's historical, how we're going to deal with an historical accusation. Um, and so that's the, that's the classic, the, the famous privilege we've had for hundreds of years, the attorney-client privilege, which you have, and you can shut my mouth. You can tell me, I don't want you to talk about the case. I cannot be your lawyer anymore. I can't talk about the case. You so right in that example, what, how, what has to change for it to be uh, the right. crime fraud exception? You can shut my mouth forever as the client. But then you tell me, you know, I still have some documents that are really incriminating for me. Where should we hide them so that the feds <laughs> will never find them? <laughs> now, I uh, that that may blow me away, and I may write that down in my notes. And I had there's nothing... never been anything like this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've never had anything to. I've never. Had, I may have had nothing to do with it at all. You just told me those things, and I wrote a note down about that. They can get my notes, not because I'm in league with you to commit a crime, but because that would be prima facie evidence. My notes to a judge that you were trying to commit a crime using a lawyer, and you can't use a lawyer as your pawn to commit a crime any more than you can use anyone else as a pawn to commit a crime. But it's a very slippery slope. How do you show a judge that there's gonna be something like that in my notes? How do you show a judge in a prima facie case that you were uh, using a lawyer, not for some historical advice or how to deal with it, but to commit an ongoing crime? Like in Trump's case, right? The idea is that he got this subpoena and he didn't wanna comply with it. And he didn't wanna know what his rights were to not comply with it. He wanted to do this, you know, the, the switcheroo, right? Um, and to, to enter into a conspiracy and that the lawyer knows a lot about what happened there. And the lawyer was actually used. The lawyer was used as a pawn to stand there and say, I have reviewed uh, every single thing in this case. And yet he knows that when he came and this and that. Now you take the thing with the plucking. When he calls him and he says, look, I know you've got some stuff in your hotel room uh, that you've just got from Mar-a-Lago and you're supposed to turn it over to the FBI tomorrow morning. But, you know, go through it tonight and uh -uh, pluck out things that really hurt me, come on. That is so obviously criminal, right? You don't have a right to have a guy pluck out documents that are to be turned over and that hurt you and that are under a subpoena because he got a law degree. Um, so that's, that's what they're up against, but that's gonna be revisited. And the other thing that's gonna delay it is this classified documents thing. That's a real thing. First, the lawyers have to get uh, national security uh, clearance. Now I have one because I was an assistant US attorney but most attorneys have never dealt with, with issues like that or gotten a national security clearance. So they literally have to do background checks on the attorneys yes. and make sure that- Yes, oh, and they have, to oh do it on, they have to do it on a very fast basis. Now, again, what the special counsel is gonna do, because he's smart, is he's gonna tell him, okay, Mr. Defense Attorney, uh, you need to submit three more documents. And then the next day he's gonna call up and he'd say, you know, you haven't submitted the three documents yet. 
Uh, and then if it goes on like that, he's going to go to the judge and say, look, this is just another way to delay this thing. They're dragging their feet at getting their national security clearance. But once they have the national security clearances, if they don't get one, then they can't be the lawyer. That's just the way it works. Um, and Trump had to go find two lawyers who had national security clearances. And the valet has said that with all of Trump's money and all the lawyers in America, he couldn't find a lawyer. And then he's going to come in, in the next day or two. And I guess he's going to say he either found one or he's still looking. And uh, the judge needs to clamp down because, as I say, it's this drumbeat of delay. But the case is not going to your listeners, your viewers. This case is not going to go to trial. They have this judge who no matter what she, what she issued right now is the Speedy Trial Act. She has to set a date within 70 days. So she set a date within 70 days. Everybody's reporting. Well, it looks like she's really moving it along. No, she's not. She had to set a date within 70 days. And now somebody, it's going to be the defense, is going to come forward and say, but wait, we need to file motions. We need to research them. It's going to take us three months to do it. You watch. That'll be and what those happens. Del- wow. And those delays will all be granted. Uh, but the, the case, just to be clear, we're so out of time. But just in 30 seconds, this case will come to trial, won't it? Or it will be pled out? It'll only get played out, I think, if um, Trump has no political future. Then he'll have an interest in pleading out and making a deal in all of his pending criminal investigations. I don't think there's any. Otherwise, it's co- otherwise it's trial on, but it'll be after the the general election. If he or a Republican ally win, there'll be a pardon. It'll never go forward oh, at sure, all. Of course, yeah. and then I think yeah. that he'll plead it out. Uh, if if that isn't if he doesn't become the president again, or some ally of his does it and pardon him then I think he'll settle the case. I don't think we're ever going to see the great trial. It won't be people versus OJ. USB yeah. Trump in front of Judge Cannon, I don't think we'll ever come to trial. We won't be missing anything on TV because uh, trials aren't televised. They're talking, Mark, though, about maybe having a video, uh, an audio feed, so you can at least hear it audio. That's That'd all very nice. That extraordinary, yeah. That, that, case, that, that case is very unlikely to go to it's trial. And I don't think any yeah. chance it's going to go to trial. Trump doesn't want to lose the trial. Uh, while he's running for president sure, again? No sure, way. Sure. No way. He'll delay the hell out of it. Uh, he is uh, so kind to spend time with us. You can find him on, as I say, programs, radio and television across the world. And uh, here on Thursdays, the former federal prosecutor. He is David Katz. By the way, nice Mark Thompson show throw pillow, sir. Very strategically. And, and he's got the well-deserving of the merch. So uh, thanks, David. Hi, it's Mark. And I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.